Hello again, welcome back to the channel. This is the carrier out of a Dana 44. If you've been following this channel, you might be wondering, what's this thing doing here? Didn't you button up that Dana 44? Get everything together? The answer is, yes, yes I did. And then I got to thinking. In fact, it was pointed out to me that uh, there's something going on. I don't know why, but I'd always assumed that I had 355 and 354 gears in that truck. This is the ring that was out of the original. If you look right here, it says 4712. This ring does not have a gear ratio on it, but that is the number of teeth on the ring, and that's the number of teeth on a pinion. That comes out when you do the math to 392. The 391 pinion is also stamped, you can see, 4712. So, 12 teeth on the pinion matches 47 on the ring, which, again, gives us a 392 gear ratio. 392 is great for pulling stumps and rock crawling, but for something that I may want to take on the highway, it's not that great. Other than the obvious fact that truck has got the aerodynamics of a cinder block, it probably also explains a little bit why it only got about 12 miles to the gallon. So what I decided was I was going to go down to not quite a steep of a gear. I said, eh, let's go down to a 354. So I bought a 354 ring and pinion, put the pinion into the housing, checked the uh, bearing preload, got all of that working, tried to drop this down in, and it didn't fit. It just the teeth on the ring gear and the teeth on the pinion hit before the bearings sat down in the saddle. So I pulled the bearings off, took some shims out, tried it again. Still wouldn't fit. Took the bearings off, took all the shims out, put it back in. Still doesn't fit. Now, if you know anything about Dana 44s, or at least more than I knew at the time, you're probably laughing to yourself. There are two carriers for these. If you've got a gear ratio that is, I think it's 372, it's 370 something as the cutoff. That or below, it takes one carrier, and then above that takes a different. So 391s take one carrier, and a 355 take a different carrier completely. So unfortunately for me, but I guess good for content, the original plan was to not take side gears and spider gears and disassemble the carrier, but now I don't really have any option. I've got to do it because I have to change to a different carrier. I did buy another one. You can already see here that this one sits a little bit higher than this. Once I get this one completely taken apart, we'll take a look at the two and be able to see. But what I have to do is I have to take the bearings off of this yet again, and then I need to take the ring gear, get it swapped over, then I need to take uh, the spider gears and side gears out of in here and install them in here. Just taking a quick look at the differences between them, something that maybe you'd be able to tell in the vehicle, what I'm noticing is this depression right here. It's maybe a quarter inch on these, maybe only an eighth of an inch where it goes down. And on this one, it goes down quite a bit. There's at least a half inch drop off in there. So I think that if you were just looking at one of these with the cover off, that would be the easiest way to tell the difference. But again, I'm going to pull the bearings off, get everything out, and then we can take a look at the carrier side by side. It looks like the primary difference is the distance from right here, where that ring gear face uh, bolts on, to here is uh, longer than it is on this one which pushes the ring gear further away from the pinion, which gives you the room to actually install it, which I didn't have. First up, I'm pulling the bearings and shims off of the old carrier. I've got a special tool for doing that. I've got a video that goes into more detail on how that works. I'll put a link up here. All right, I've pulled the bearings and the ring gear off of these. If you take a look, my first guess was that this opening might be different between the two, but I don't think it is. It looks like it's about two and three eighths there, and about two and three eighths there as well. So that's not an easy way to tell. But you can, if you look here, look at the height of this and the height of this. 
It'd be probably real hard to tell with the ring gear on it though. Because if I set a ring down on here, it comes up past the inside of that ring gear, but that's really difficult to tell. I think if you had this on the vehicle and you were trying to tell exactly which one you had, it's going to be the uh, depressions here. These go in for about a half inch, I would guess. Maybe even a little more. Obviously, if you can tell what the gear ratio is, that'll also tell you. But, you know, always nice to have a couple of different options. I didn't video pulling the ring gear off. I mean, it's pretty trivial. You just have a bunch of these bolts that go through from the other side into the ring gear. You take them off, the ring gear comes right off. The next thing we have to do is we need to pull out this center pin so that we can get the spider gears out and the side gears. It is held in with a drift pin right here, or a roll pin. So what we have to do is go through this hole right here and drive it out. So I need to find a punch that fits down in here, and it probably needs to be pretty accurate because that roll pin is also hollow, so you can't go something too small, it'll just go down into the roll pin. Let's see if I have something the right size and long enough. Well, I've got this punch here, and it goes down and hits the tapered part before it gets there, I think. So that's not terribly useful. Next idea, I'm going to just use a sacrificial drill bit coming from this side and then try to drive it. Hopefully it doesn't just snap this bit off. They are fairly brittle because they're so hard. Obviously make sure that that bit has a little bit of play because you don't want to smack it down in there and have it get stuck. All right, here we go. You can see it's driving that pin out, actually coming out real easily. All right, once we have the roll pin out, we can drive this pin all the way through. And that comes out. All right, once you have that out, you can actually just rotate, hold the bottom side gear and turn the top one. You can see that the spider gears just kind of rotate themselves right out. They have a washer. I want to make sure you keep those. And then the side gears just come right out. Notice side gears also have thrust washers in there. On both sides. It's a little stuck on there with grease, but there you go. One thing I found about swapping that ring gear before is torquing the ring gear into the carrier is actually really hard to do because there's no real good way to grab onto it. I'm going to do it now because I don't have any gears in here. It'll be much easier to get a hold of the carrier while I do the uh, torque of the bolts that hold the ring on. This new carrier did come with brand new ring gear bolts, shims for the side, and a new roll pin. I'm probably just going to use the roll pin. The rebuild kit that I bought for the bearings came with new bolts, so I'm just using those. It also came with shims for the bearings, so I can use those as well. I had already lubricated all those bolts. You should always lubricate new bolts. Before you put them in, you'll get a more accurate torque reading. Just going to run them down till they're a little bit tight and then torque them. Torque these to 55 pounds. Going back together is pretty much just the reverse of taking it apart. You do want to make sure that these surfaces, which are dry right now, that you get lubricated. You can use gear oil 
or in this case I'm just going to use some white lithium grease. We take one of the side gears, drop it into the bottom. Make sure it spins freely. And we'll put the top one in. Again, before you put these in, verify that you have this shim in there, this thrust washer, and that it's lubricated on both sides of that washer. Before I put this in, I'm going to make sure I have my spider gears clean and ready to go. Get one in here, and then the other one in back over on this side. And then you can just kind of walk them around using both gears to get it in. Use your fingers to get the gear and the washer aligned with the hole. Now, it's not been drilled here, but it has here for that roll pin. And this pin only has one hole, so you have to make sure that it goes in properly. So this hole is going to line up here. Before I put it in, I'm going to clean it up and lubricate it with lithium grease again. All you're trying to do is get a film on it so that it has lubrication until the gear oil gets down into everything. So you don't need a whole bunch, but you want it to be nice and slippery. Oh, f me. You can't get this in while the ring gear is on. So I guess we'll pull the ring gear back off. It goes in nice and easy. I'm not doing much. When you get it to this point, make sure that hole is upright. So you can use something like this to pivot it, but make sure it's going to line up. And then eyeball down this hole to line up the hole in it. I can't really show you on camera I don't think maybe yeah there you can see it so I've got them lined up I'm gonna take the new roll pin give it a little lubrication make sure everything still spins and now back on with the ring gear. All right, next up is shims. Honestly, I have no idea what size to put in since I've changed the carrier, I've changed the ring, I've changed the pinion. I think it's probably just a crapshoot. Maybe guys that have done this a lot have a good idea on how to do that. Go ahead and put something down in the comments below if you know a good way to do this. Otherwise, I'm just gonna slap a couple of shims on each side, put it together, and do some measurement. And then go from that uh, go from that point. Now I just have the long process of dropping this in, checking the backlash, checking the uh, footprint with some marking uh, compound, and repeating the process over and over until I get it right. I guess on the plus side, I get to show you this. Last time I didn't get video of me checking the lash here, but this time I've got it set up. So, got the dial indicator up against a tooth here. I'll show you from the top here in a little bit. But really what we're trying to do is we move the gear back and forth. So it looks like it's at 90 there. And it comes up past the so about 15 thousandths, maybe 16 thousandths. That's the lash right there. That's supposed to be between four and nine thousandths. 
so the backlash is too big. Come up and take a look. This is how it's set up. And so we're moving forward and back more than nine thousandths. So what has to happen is this needs to move this direction to mesh closer with that pinion down there. So what that means is I need to remove shims from right here and I could probably move them over to this side. Right now I don't actually know you know what the uh, pattern is going to look like so I don't know if I just need to move them or if I need to simply remove them. That's the fun here. So I'm going to take this off, take some shims out to move it over and leave this side like it is to try to get that backlash a little bit better. I added about 14 thousandths worth of shims here and removed the same from over here. So what that's done is that's moved this this direction and now the backlash is actually already measured it's at about four thousandths. So that looks really good but now the problem is the next thing you need to make sure of is that there's bearing preload. So these bearings need to be loaded, needs to be squeezed in, otherwise the whole ring assembly will wobble uh, when it's being driven. It's not something that you can see, but there needs to be preload, so it actually needs to be squeezed. And I can tell that this one isn't right because I can just pull that out by hand. You should definitely not be able to do that. You should require a bar to pull it out and, you know, a few taps with a dead blow hammer to get it in. I don't want to affect this direction anymore, so I'm going to add just a little bit more on this side to tighten that up, leaving the same over here so that the backlash over here stays the same or hopefully stays the same, but adds a little bit of preload to these bearings so that it doesn't just drop right down in and pull right out. This is much better. The last time I just set it in and it dropped straight down in. Now it doesn't, doesn't clear the case and it doesn't really want to go down in here very badly either. It's not wanting to go down any further than that, I don't think. So now it doesn't want to go any further, and there's at least a probably half inch, somewhere around there, three eighths of an inch between this race and the saddle. So it doesn't want to go any further. So the bearing preload is too. Uh, big. I put in ten thousandths over here. I've got to take it apart, take that off, and go down to say five thousandths and try it again. In the end, I had to pull the carrier out six times. I think I did bearing swaps about nine. I can't re really remember, but I got it all set up. Backlash right now is at about five to six thousandths. It's got good uh, bearing preload. Everything is ready to go. So, I can cover this back up, reassemble both ends, and get this hung underneath the frame. That's all there is for today. Thanks for watching.